everyone, and welcome to another session for Scrub Sessions. I'm Dr. Mm -hmm. Emma O'Brien, Head of Music Therapy and Scrub Choir here at the Royal Melbourne, and it's my absolute pleasure to have Matt and Pagan, and they're here, they're coming straight to us from the fabulous, fabulous, fabulous band. So, Matt and Pagan, tell me a bit about the name of your band. I didn't want to give it away there, because is it about where you're from, or is it about where you, what you love? No, so... Um, our band is called Darlinghurst and um, none of us are from the area. <laughs> um, the idea of the song actually came because Cassie, who's also in the band, she had written a movie script and it was called Darlinghurst and for ages we couldn't figure out what on earth to call a band. Like we'd all have ideas and we're like, awful. Yeah. Um, but then she mentioned as a joke, oh, what about Darlinghurst? And we all loved it and then we so we stole it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, very, it's very confusing for a lot of people. We constantly get emails from bands like, oh, we're local act, we're from Sydney, you know, we're going to play together. It's like, we're from Victoria. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, we're all from Australia, aren't we? Yeah. Um, exactly. But it, I think it kind of works because it's kind of got a little bit of Darlin in it, hasn't it? Like, you know, it's kind of like Darlin Hurst. I don't know. I, I, I think it's a great country band. vibe. It definitely yeah, has a it does. I, I think it does. It, I think a few people have started to call us the Darlings. Oh, yeah. okay. I've heard a few radio announcers call us the Darls. Oh. <laughs> so the whole point of Scrub Sessions is to get together, to meet amazing musicians like you guys, and to talk about the power of music for health and well-being. Obviously, music therapy, that's, that's the work we do. We're here working right through the whole of the pandemic, singing at um, patients' bedsides with, with a lot of distance, mind you, and lots of gear as I showed you, like a big screen and the mask, but it's all about recognizing that as human beings, we need music and music keeps us connected. So I suppose what I'd kind of like to do is take you back in time and ask you both a little question about what's your earliest music memory? Uh, for me, I come from a, a musical family. So I grew up listening and to my parents play music and stuff like that. So it would have been at a very young age. Um, but I always remember going to, because my mum did pantomimes. Oh, so she'd excellent. Be, she'd be Cinderella or, um, you know, Snow White or something. And I always remember going along when she was doing her tours and stuff, running amok backstage and um, <laughs> just being surrounded by music. And I loved it. That's amazing. Did you, did you get to jump on the pantomime yourself? I think um, mum had to stop me a few times, but <laughs> that's great, that's great. how about you, Peggy? What's your earliest music memory? Well, I think I actually don't come from a musical family at all, but I think from when I was little, we used to do big trips. My grandparents lived in um, Marimbula and my dad loves music, even though he can't play anything or sing, but um, you know, we'd always have the Eagles or Queen or, you know, those big harmony based bands in the car and I think everyone was like how is she knowing all of these songs and picking them up and I think I've just loved you know belting out all these songs ever since I was little and never wanted to stop. How beautiful isn't it that, that car trip the car tape they call it don't they it's amazing the beautiful memories you can have from that and singing along did you sing along as a family? Um was it just you in the back rocking it out? It was probably just <laughs> me to be honest. I was like, oh, not again. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because one of the main things with music therapy in the hospital is that you don't have to be musical to benefit from, from music therapy and from music. And I think, you know, I know you've got a really unique story with the pandemic and how you've managed to sort of keep going. And we'd love to hear that because I think it's that, it's not just that you obviously you're a band and you, you like each other, but it's the music, isn't it, that's driving you to keep you going. So perhaps, Peggy, if you could kick off sharing a bit of that story and Matt, you can jump in as well. I think for us, the main thing is because we, we write all of our songs and um, not only do we love writing our songs, but we love being together. Like as a band, we're great mates and we have such a good time, but I think to keep writing for us was so important and mm. to still have that connection and to get, you know, what we needed to get out. Because at the end of the day, for a lot of musicians, music is the only ability you can get out how you feel. We're, we're very introverted 
being. So being able to still write with each other and still convey our thoughts and how we're feeling was so important, like a therapy session as well. So yeah, for us to be able to keep doing that was was really cool. Did I you do that remotely too? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we um we did a lot of writing via Skype and Zoom, um, which is a different experience for us, but um we actually really enjoyed it. I think it's the one thing that kept a lot of us sane during lockdowns and you know something that's actually making you feel good because you know obviously with the pandemic there's a lot you know a lot of hardship that comes along with it um yeah. but you know that's the our sort of our outlet that helps us and I think uh, whether you, like you said whether you are a musician or not um music is so powerful that it can you know it gives you that sense of positivity and gets really does get you through the day so we're so thankful we we're able to do that yeah did you find the um the timing a bit tricky though on zoom and skype when you were doing yeah. that or yeah definitely <laughs> singing along with that delay is uh very tricky <laughs> someone's playing guitar if i'm playing guitar and then pagan goes to sing it's like whoa 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 <laughs> <laughs> It was mainly writing sessions. Yeah, it was mainly yeah. because it just was a, it with four pieces to it was a disaster. <laughs> and is there was there an underlying theme in a lot of the songs? You, were you were you talking about now? Were you talking about just you talked about how you felt? Did you find that you know you look back maybe in five years time and go yeah I can see how we wrote those then? Um, I yeah. think we tried to stay clear of pandemic related things I, I yeah. think we, we did we did do a lot on how we were feeling mentally and yeah. um, you know sort of trying then to flip it and be positive at the same time but I think yeah for us there were so many pandemic related and COVID related songs we we're like nope not doing it <laughs> yeah yeah um, I think with lockdowns and stuff it's actually been a really good time for everyone to kind of re reflect on life prior to the pandemic as well. Yeah, well, it's exciting. I, I look, you know, one of our works that we do here, I told you, this is our music therapy recording studio because songwriting is a big part of what we offer our patients as well. And in fact, after this session, I'm heading up to see one of my patients. She's sadly at the end of her life, but she's wanting to write a song for her family and it's a it's just beautiful. And she'll be, you know, sending them a message of love through that. And it's really, it's a really powerful way to stay connected. and. It's amazing that when you find someone you can really connect with and write a song with, isn't it? I mean, you've obviously got a great dynamic. So, so Matt, how did you sort of find yourself in this band? I know you all sort of came from different areas and then how did it, how did it happen? Yeah, so we, uh, we met through a mutual producer. Um, his name's Pete Dacey. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think Cass and Pags, you guys have been singing for about 10 years or something. <laughs> Um, they've been best mates and singing together for ages so they're a bit of a duo um, and then they went into the studio wanted to record some originals and uh, Jason in the band was working with Pete mm. so then they formed a bit of a trio um, and the songs were like they came up really great and they're looking for another guitarist and singer and I knew Pete because I'd done work experience with him when I was 16 wow um, and then 10 years later he gave me a call he's like hey Matt you still playing music and <laughs> Um, and then uh, I, I met with Pete and Jay showed me the songs and, and then I met the girls and absolutely loved it. And it's, it's been a great time since. So the rest That's is amazing. The rest is <laughs> that has stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily. So, so you, you were a duo to start with. And so was it, a, it sounds like it was a, so like sometimes duos are duos, aren't they? But it sounds like there was this amazing kind of melding and a great fit that sort of happened miraculously. Here's well, the work experience, hey? <laughs> well, it's crazy, I think. Well, Cassie and I have done a whole heap of different stuff too. We started out in cover bands and tribute bands and corporate stuff, and then we wanted to do some stuff on our own. And as soon as we, like at the first song we sat down and all wrote together is on the album, which is what now nearly four years later. Um, as soon as we all met, there was some sort of like, it just felt like it fit. And... Yeah. I think that's the most important thing is chemistry and the ability to be able to connect with each other and understand each other on, on a, an emotional level and a musical level. And you don't get that often. So I think mm. as soon as we felt it, we're like, 
That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love your sound. It's really gorgeous. It's it's fresh. It's it's a, it's a little different. Like you know, it's a you go, you go okay, country music. I sometimes people think certain things about certain styles of music, but you're doing something different. It's kind of I don't want to say sparkly, but <laughs> there's something just something a little bit different about it. I love it. I really love it. I'll tell you what, I would love, and I, this is me looking forward to the future, to hear you play live one day because I'd like to also see that vibe on stage. We Do can't wait it? to play live again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we all come from extremely different musical backgrounds, you know. Um, Pat is doing like R&B sort of stuff. I was more from the folk background and Jason Cass with country and pop and all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of like... You know, we're put in the same room and it's kind of that's what's come out. It's just this yeah. a merging of all the different genres <laughs> and musical taste and stuff like that. So when you're writing the songs, do you find that one person is really guiding the process or is it really equal? I think it all depends on um, who came up with the concept. I think that has a lot to do with how the song shapes. So I think we start off with really like maybe a verse and a chorus. Um, and then we start to collaborate once we all agree that we like it. Um, Jason then musically is an absolute genius. And he plays pretty much every instrument on the album. Um, he then, with his genius mind, comes up with all the parts for all the different instruments. So in that case, we are so lucky to have him. <laughs> um, but along the way every single step of the way it's a full collaborative process with all four of us and um which is really cool yeah and who are your music heroes so many um <laughs> but yeah coming from the folk background like i love bob dylan and cat stevens and all that and um also love john mayer i think he's an incredible pop songwriter and yeah. a lot of his lyrics and stuff resonate with me so they're my musical heroes i'm Aretha Franklin, um, Whitney Houston, Fleetwood Mac. Um, my genres of who I love all comes from different, because I love like the harmony thing and the whole collaborative thing for me is just like, as soon as I hear a harmony, I melt. Like I love it. Um, but I also grew up singing all these, you know, the Tina Turner, I did a Tina Turner tribute at one stage and Ooh. I, um, you know, love those big empowering singing voices of those the women so um yeah so I that they're mine yeah and it's that true sound I think you're all you're all like identifying um musicians are not just fabulous musicians but they've got real true voices I think to really stand out it is important to you know sing the way you sing and the way that's coming from your heart because you know you're the only person that has that so I think for it to be unique I think it's so important to to do it truthfully you're talking about truth you've got all this sort of unique sound just ask, tell me a bit about your chart success stories I mean it's been amazing off you go let's let's throw together a band and woof off you go so tell me a bit about what that was like I think it really exceeded our expectations really yeah. when we um released our first song sorry I won't get you back um yeah. we were a bit well we kind of we we believed it was a great song but you never know what other people are going to think listening to yeah. it really I think that all of our families and our friends and stuff have been so supportive. I think they're now getting to the point where we sort of were at, where it's like, okay, it'd be great if you can gig. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out there and do something because at the moment, yeah. And it's, but it's, it's, it's been amazing that considering, you know, I think we released our first song probably four months before the pandemic hit. Yeah. Um, that, each and every one of our songs has done so well considering that we haven't been able to get out and show everyone what we've been doing. And the fact that people are relating to our stuff in such an awful time um, mm. means so much. And for, for them to keep doing well in the charts, I'm, I'm always like pinching myself. I'm like, are you, are you sure? Is this a mistake? Because <laughs> it's just, it just feels surreal. I suppose you know, when we're in lockdown and we are in this surreal world, how are you How are you guys looking after yourselves? We're talking a lot about singing and writing songs together, but, you know, 
Hagen, how are you how are you getting through your lockdown days and and what's what's kind of a top tip sort of thing for people? Look, I have had some massive ups and downs uh, through lockdown. I've got a seven year old, so half the time I'm um, homeschooling, which look. I, ha I give everything to all parents doing that because it's not my cup of tea. Um, <laughs> but that, and I find getting out and doing that walk when, when you have been able to do it and getting some exercise in and just doing things to clear your mind because it's very easy for things to keep adding up and for your mind to just go, Woo! and it's just, it's just, you need that time to just settle yourself and just, clear everything and for me it's either going out and walking or standing in front of my mirror and just singing for a few hours and I'm sure my mirror is very over me at the moment <laughs> I love that image how about you how about you there's Matt? a song in that page I know my mirror is over me right now let's go, let's go. all right go <laughs> um yeah for me definitely exercise as well even it's just going for a run just for a little bit it just it clears my mind and mm -hmm. um obviously songwriting and stuff with the band over Zoom, that kind of gets us through. Um, but at the moment, I've actually been doing some support work, which has been really good. So it gets me out and I get to work with people, um, which okay. has been really good as well. This is where we we are learning so much about ourselves, aren't we? We're learning about how things were before. I mean, things are, will always be different. And it's beautiful that you had songwriting, I must say. I'll, I'll be thinking of that when I, when I go and see my patient next. I'll think about yeah, this songwriting really rocks. Yeah. That actually, that I nearly started to tear up when you were talking about that. It's just, you just, I love for me, the emotional side of music is mm. everything. And that story is just one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Because sometimes, you know, our, our job is just to remind people about their own music, you know, talk about their music memories. What does music mean to them? And it, yeah, it is, it's so beautiful to, to work with people. They let you in in a moment of your life because of because of the music you know it'll it'll be I'll ask if she doesn't mind you hearing her song afterwards she'll probably say yes <laughs> I tell her I told you she'll be like oh what a thrill she's quite extraordinary I mean you meet amazing people and they're very inspiring yeah is there anything else you either of you'd like to add Pagan you got any last sort of you know messages for us for our staff for our patients look when it comes to music express any way that you possibly do there's no wrong thing to do there's no right thing to do just whatever makes you feel good go for it yeah beautiful how about you matt <laughs> absolutely Paige, you nailed it i think you know there's so many things going on in the world but you can also you can all just sit down and listen to a song it can really change you know can change your life really and your your emotions at that time and you know it's so powerful and everyone should you know chuck on a song when they're not feeling great and it'll really get you through so music yes. and music <laughs> and sing sing to your mirror <laughs> i love that image well i'll get you guys to introduce your song this song is our brand new single um it's called unfaithful we're really proud of it and um we really hope you enjoy it <laughs> 